Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm gonna to show you how to do this gorgeous, yet easy zen painting of iris flowers and a couple of cute little butterflies. I'm gonna have some really great tips for you so you can be super successful at this painting. I'm gonna tell you the number one thing that's gonna trip you up as a beginner and how to fix it. I'm gonna demonstrate every brush stroke, every color mix, explain why we're doing what we're doing, uh, talk to you about alternatives. This is live. So if you have a question, be sure and put it all in caps. Either the moderators will be able to find you a link to a video that will help you, or you might get your question answered live in the show. And this is Lab Lab. Lab on the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He makes these uh, lessons possible by making sure the cameras, one of our many robotic cameras, is pointed at the work that we're doing. So you can see the brush stroke. You can see how much pressure is being applied. You can see how the color mixes are being created. Because what you can see, you can probably duplicate at home. I want to give everybody a big hug for showing up today. And we're going to take a breath to begin this process. So let's breathe. Like let out that tension, right? So this style of painting sometimes is mistaken for sumi uh, ink painting, which it is not. Uh, my grandmother actually was trained in that particular style of painting, and it uses only uh, black inks. Now, sometimes those black inks have tone, like there'll be a blue cast or a red cast, and there's certainly some philosophy there, but they're definitely black. The idea being philosophically that with black is all color. Ah. Uh. Yeah. So we're not going to be that intense today. <laughs> we're going to use some different colors. And we're going to use some aesthetic and brushstroke philosophy to create something very relaxing and chill. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have a 9 by 12 watercolor block. That means all the pages are glued together and then they have a little area that you can open them up and pull them apart with a little keyhole. That prevents uh, buckling and warping in your paper without you having to stretch it yourself. I think I'm going to try to do this entire one with a quill brush. Now, this is one of my very favorites. This is a number four Raphael Soft Aqua. Um, this has no squirrel in it. Mm. This imitation squirrel. So you have this they, gorgeous quill, but you didn't kill anything to get it. Hmm? They're not imitation. They're robots. They're robot squirrels. They don't <laughs> like this whole imitation. They're real. They're it's, just robots. It's not a hallucination. It is a brush and it's in your hand, but it didn't kill anything. No. If you buy one of these and you've never had one before, please leave the wire and plastic or leather on. This actually holds the brush together. It seems like it would be removed, but it is not to be removed. And if you've ever done that, please know I've been online seven years, <laughs> talked to hundreds of thousands of people. I can assure you, you're not alone for having made that mistake. It's kind of a common mistake because it should say it right on the package. Do not I, remove weird wire things. I almost did it when I first got one of those. I was like, hey, I, was, I can't get these wires off. And she's like, don't. And I was don't. Like, Why? But I'm here with you now to say, don't. <laughs> All right. We have Payne's Gray. You could be using any black that you have. We're going to be thinking of our black almost as a blue today. We also have ultramarine blue. We have nickel ozo yellow. You could use any yellow that you have. And I have quinacridone magenta. I'm going to try to stay within these colors to do this particular painting. Now, here's the number one tip that you need to know as a beginner. What you'll want to do is think that your brush stroke isn't perfect or you didn't do it quite right and you're going to want to start over or fix it or whatever, but you can't, okay? What you're going to do is the brush strokes are the brush strokes that you've made and you're going to complete the process. If you want to change it, then you paint it again. It is sort of a philosophical Zen thing, so we're going to definitely breathe through it. But I know watching so many new painters, you get the brush stroke, you think it's somehow weirdly different than mine, and then you guess, second guess it. Don't second guess it. We're going to go through. I will just, what? Don't do it. Don't, Don't do it. second guess. Don't second guess it. It's better to paint it two or three times than to stop the painting because how you learn this process is by doing the entire project. So I've so, got to be... I've got to be careful here because mm -hmm. sometimes I enthusiastically support her. And so she's like, wait, what, what, what? I'm what? like, no, no, I agree. I'm <laughs> full agreement. There's a curtain. I can't see what he's going to be flailing his arms over here. I don't know. The curtain is not to keep me from looking at him, though it is a green curtain. So the Oz thing is very funny for me. There literally is a man There's, behind a green curtain. It, please ignore the man behind the green curtain. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm going to actually begin this project with my two blooms and then uh, add stalks and other things. Let's just do the butterflies last. I'm going to use the quill the entire way through. Guess what? You could just use a round brush if you don't have a quill. You'll get the same techniques out. 
I'm going to get my quill moderately wet, which means I'm going to come in and just sort of drag off extra water, right? I don't want too much. And I'm going to load some Payne's Gray fairly heavily into the brush. All right, so I have a nice amount of it. And I'll go ahead and get some quinacridone magenta. And that will give us our kind of purple cast, right? Because there's a lot of blue in Payne's Gray as it is. And let's come here. And I'm going to start about, if you imagine that this is divided in half and half up here in the upper third, I'm going to come on the toe of the brush. I'm going to press down, pull, and then press up. I didn't have quite enough ink on there, so I'm going to come back in and get a little more because I'm not completed with that. I am not going to do this uh, wet in any way. All right, so this is that weird first stroke. It takes a minute to get used to. So let's come here and maybe talk about a bit of an iris coming out that way. See how we're just being super chill? Every time I do this, a little bit different. On the toe, and I'm dragging back. So I am not painting, um, you know, this flower in this very rigid anatomical way that we normally do. We're just painting it very loosely. If you want to pull some paint out, you can do some of these in more of a dry brush. Let me see how that works right here. I'm going to bring a nice stroke up and bring that down. And let's get a little blue into this over here. Not adding more water. I'm going to come on the side. There we go. I'm just adding a little bit of a petal there. They're pretty every time you do them, so it's just, just enjoy. Let's do kind of a, this is yeah. touch the toe and maybe pull. This is really pretty. Yeah, this is just a very <sighs> relaxed, meditative process of doing this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to maybe think about adding some buds down here. Whoops, hold on. I was trying to read chat. Okay, I'm going to come down and do another one, so it's all right. Getting a little more of my red into that one. Let's stagger these some. Yeah, and I'm just on the toe of the brush. And we're just talking about buds, okay? I'm going to come down here and let John catch up with me. I was reading the questions I got somewhere. Okay. Let's, let's put this one kind of up here and we'll just pull that in. I have just a little pressure at the beginning and release at the end. It's not a lot. All right. Okay, let me try to do something else. Come over here. Because I know everyone's going to not, they're going to be like, All right, there we go. Little buds are in. That Fizzle. will help. That will help. Yay! That no one has asked for it yet, but I've realized it's that gonna just make a big difference. Yeah. What's right. this technique called? Um. Cinnamon it is certainly. It, it, yeah, it's very zen. It's certainly got a, um, an Asian aesthetic in its economy of style. The reason you hear me being super reluctant to call it sumi is because when it's not accurate. And because that particular style of paint is uh, very culturally centered and requires a lot of training. It is it is a serious process for so many people. So I just want to be kind of influenced by influenced by. Right. Treat it like a trademark. Going to go influenced by not a Zen tangle. It's a Zen. It's a Zen doodle. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a doodle that brings you Zen. It's not so, a Zen doodle. So in this like. You know, when we appreciate the artwork or aesthetic of um, another artist or another culture, what you want to do is you want to be an appreciation, right? And you can definitely learn from things and improve yourself as an artist. It's just, you know, it's important to know if something is significant or has deeper meaning or maybe a much more considered um, learning process than you might be invested. It doesn't mean you can't get a lot out of it and this particular style absolutely teaches you about brush stroke, teaches you about pressure, teaches you about how a little makes a lot and mm. can help all of your painting process become better. Oh, Karen's painting along with you this time. Oh, yes. Oh, my yeah. goodness. All right. I'm going to come here and I'm kind of on the toe of the brush and I want to maybe bring it up here and bring a little one in. All right, so Karen, if you need any, like, views or cuts, let me know. 
All right, I'm going to get a little of my magenta on here. And I'll uh, perhaps a little bit on the toe there and then come in and out. See, it's very, very light. This brush, I'm going to come under and over. Oh, I like that, how that one went. That was crazy that time. And every time you do it, a little different, not the same. Every time. On different paper, it will be different. There we go. And the trick is, is just don't, don't, uh, don't question every brush stroke. Really seriously. Just go with it. Finish it, look at it and go, let's try that again. Let's try that again. Um, you know, uh, Strathmore makes some very good, uh, this is, this is really lovely paper. This is Fabriano. So that's like, you know, maybe more of an investment, but you can get some Strathmore watercolor block for much more economy. Divide the pages in half and practice this and practice this till you've got it nailed. Then when you get it nailed, you can do it on a really big sheet of watercolor paper and float that and be stunning in your home. Just mm. saying. Goals. <laughs> goals. Hashtag goals. Oh my goodness. Now we have some very delicate little brush strokes we're going to work on. I'm going to get some of my blue. I don't mind that it, it I'm going to get into my yellow and it's going to give me a bit of a green. My brush is kind of wet. And I'm going to come here and try to make a little ball stroke. So I'm going to press down and release. Let's make another little jointed one there. I kind of want to dry that out a bit. See if I can get one of these dry strokes. I'm having a little trouble with my dry brushing today. And uh, every wiggle up. There we go. Got some nice dry brushes there. I'm going to come here so the brush is beautifully dry. So I'll go ahead and oh, kind of add that right there. A couple little dots. Back into a wetter paint. Come here and maybe add some of those. Oh my gosh, so many supporters, guys. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you for everyone who's supporting. We're going to start trying to do some cool stuff for uh, you guys that are supporting live during the shows. Mm -hmm. Something special for you guys. I'm working on it. I have um, an idea that I don't want to out on the show. I already had an idea. You can't take my idea. But I... Maybe I had the idea before you had the idea. I don't think you did. I don't want to out you because I can say it right now. What is it? I'm not going to do that. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's going to commit you to it. As soon as I say it, everyone's going to go, oh, yes. You can see we're just doing very, very little, right? We're not getting, we're not going to get deep into it. We're not going to do that. Now we've got some beautiful dark blades. I'm going to really load my pans gray. I'm going to come at the bottom. I'm going to hold high up on my brush. This did, I'm going to look at the way. Come off the page, and we're going to be a little playful up here. We're going to go kind of up here, press maybe a little bit harder and lighter and over. Now, my brush broke the paper. I can retouch or I can just let that go. What do you yeah. mean, the brush broke the paper? In other words, I, I lost contact. If I come oh. back and make contact again, it's hard for me to it's have the delicacy. To have that. I gotcha. You're better to just redo another kind of different direction one yeah oh see it's so light here that the color it's like we're right on the edge of i have to may have to adjust the camera down but it it's it's, it's yeah it's, well okay, you can see it better from over here there you go there we go some nice little blades there just be chill with it I'm not able to shout everybody out as much as I'd like, but thank you guys. I'm just kind of doing some little brush strokes there. I'm going to wipe out um, some of this on my brush and try to get some dry brush going here. I have to be quiet so I don't like to disturb her while she's and Let's kind of talk a bit about the roughness of stone there. Hold on. Can I? I'm going to see this camera is really well adjusted. I'm going to do something real quick because I think okay. the side angle camera is it. Oh, we're optimal? almost done now. Okay. 
All right, just to warn you. No, no, it's okay. It's just- I'm going to bring some water here, and I'm going to just come off across these stems, and then I'm going to I'm gonna do this. take some water up here and kind of put it out. I'm going to really load my panes gray. There. I'll just sort of allow it to do its thing. See, I set the camera up to be this zoomed in. And you were working real wide, so everything was looking a little, uh, look at that, a little bright. So that's that beautiful kind of thing. Now I really like my favorite Payne's Gray is Core Artist Colors by Golden mm. Payne's Gray. It has a big bloom in it. You can do this style of painting with it so easily because the bloom lets it travel. You'll generally want a tight. That's one that wait, doesn't wait, wait, bloom, wait. and a blooming version of it. And oh, I'm not done. It's a bloom traveler. Because I got to get some yellow. Get some yellow. I haven't done the butterflies either, sweetheart. Oh, okay. I thought you were, see, I would thought, I thought you were all. Now I'm going to come here in the center trying. and let's pop a little yellow in there. A little bit of yellow there because that helps it be an iris, doesn't it? It does. I'm going to get a, some orange. I have to decide. You know what? I think I'm going to do my black mark first for my butterfly. That's going to help me anchor and then, you know, and then wings. So I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to get a little bit of my dark gray. Oh, yes. I'm going to come up here and let's put a little line here. And then uh, maybe one right here. Mm hmm. That looks good. Rinse out because I don't want a lot. I'm going to get some beautiful orange going. And if it gets a little black, it'll brown out a bit. Let's. Come in and. Dip it with like a little black. Oh yeah. Might even add some right there just to chill it a bit. All right. Rinsed out. Got my Quinn and my black, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe a little something there. Just a little bit of looseness. I love it. Yeah. All right. There we go. Just something Ooh. chill, you know? I, and then use this as, practice this a couple of times and then look at a vase of flowers and see what the lines are. What's the economy of the moment? How can you express those gestural strokes? You know, pick one brush. It doesn't have to be the greatest brush in the world. It doesn't have to be anything particular. You just pick one and you work through making that particular uh, uh, construction um, as expressively as you can. I want to change something. I want to add something as I'm looking at this. Can you talk about something while you're doing that? Yeah. Uh, let me get this last stroke in and then I can talk about anything. I want to okay. just kind of bring one in here because I just feel like I didn't quite get it. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. You just added a little. Just wasn't that, feeling it there in its current nice. like moment. Because that's me. I'm just a problem that way. So I was just trying to balance out some of that. Uh-huh. Because I crossed, I crossed the streams. So I had to come back and put just a, a weightier line in the leaf. I don't know why it was bugging me. So you add it when you feel it. You just, and you feel it. All right. What's the question that I'm answering? Oh, okay. Uh, and is it Facebook or is it YouTube? Hi, Facebook and YouTube. You. YouTube, I Hi, YouTube. think this. Uh, so, how do you control the brush being so floppy? How do, I mean, like that seems like it's sort of a lot of out of controlness to it. All right, I'm gonna get a little like spiritual here. I guess. All right, hold on. So, as you paint in any medium and anything, you begin to feel the pressure or the give and take 
with your brush. You can be new and start to feel this. You can be in your journey for a while and start to feel this. Everything has a spring or a pushback or a give. Um, the way weight from your body translates in and comes out. And as you're going, you know, when I see this, everything has kind of a known angle. So I know I'm going to get kind of wider strokes here. I've got a point here. Even as it moves, I know where my different brush strokes are. I know if I press harder, it will widen out. I know if I lighten it, it will fine up. Mm. So it's really about just understanding the tool and being okay with how uh, how it is. Um, you know, this would be like a tighter, more controlled brush because it's, it's made with much more of a belly to a point. But I wanted to show you with the quilt because that's, that's more fun uh, for this style, but you can just do it with anything. But really just try to feel, and one of the things that you can do to improve this knowledge, right, of that give, mm -hmm. is to sit and on, not your most expensive paper, but on paper, practice making brush strokes and feeling how the brush feels when you thicken and thin the line, how it feels as you roll it, where the counterweights are, where that balance is, how it's different towards the back, right? Try to make strokes at the back of the brush, right? Try to make, because when you get to the back of the brush, they'll get more delicate and, 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 and more expressive, and then it'll tighten up as you come up the brush. So practice with those positions, mm. practice with those moments, and um, really pay attention, not to when you mess up, that's not really helpful to you that much, but to when you get something that makes your soul sing. Yeah. How did that happen? Because that's where technique comes from. When you find that moment, you're like, wow, that was perfect. And then you can duplicate it again and again, and then it becomes part of your skill box. Is there any other questions? We got anything from oh, Facebook? Sure. Well, uh, actually, there was another one that followed up there. Mm. So it's kind of philo philosophical. It's pedosophical, actually. Pedosophical. So SB was saying this... It totally didn't work for me to not have reference where the pedals should start from. She she found that she had no context for the pedals and needed to put the stems in first. So do you have anything to, you know, everyone was like, so I was like, no, nothing wrong with that. They had different philosophical no, points. No, there's just... absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, the reason I put the buds in is so that I can judge and gauge the line coming down. Right, because these are the focal. I like to get those focals in and then put their stems in, but you can do it the other way. Now, there was uh, Emmy over, over on Facebook was asking, how do I keep my paper from curling? Okay, so you either have to stretch it, and you can Google that stretching watercolor paper. It's generally about wetting both sides and taping it down and having it on a board, and then you can either let it dry or keep it damp in the painting process. Um, I like watercolor blocks especially for my beginning students but even just for myself because it stretches the paper as it dries so it might get a little warble in it while you're painting but as it dries it will flatten back out making it nice for painting and i really really love the fabriano paper but i also like the strathmore watercolor paper i like the sizing on both of those i used to be crazy for arches um the couple of things is arches is so priced so high and then um I, I don't know. I felt like maybe something happened with the formulation oh. at some point. So I I kind of changed to Strathmore and Fabriano. Oh, Lori says, thank you so much. It was an expensive brush and I, was, and I almost threw it away because I was so frustrated with it. She was talking, she was the one who asked about the brush being floppy and what to do with oh, it. Oh, so. yeah. No, it is an expensive brush <laughs> and it does beautiful washes and it does a lot of really wonderful techniques. Um it makes m amazing flowers. It is a brush you've got to get to know because it's so it's so heavy at the head, isn't it? It's so heavy right it, here. And when it carries water, it can carry so much water. And yet look at the point it can come to. It is right. My, like I'm going to I'm going to get in here and I'm going to just, you know, you can get like little tiny points. You can dry brush with it so easily. If I can focus on it, you know, so like there's a dry brush, a little bit of weirdness. You can just work this brush so many ways. You can also shape it if I wanted to flail it out and create something that was a little more fanned. <gasps> Don't do that. That he seems right. mean to the brush. So you can get a okay? lot of technique well, out is, of this. Is that really okay? Yeah, it's really okay. It's not gonna hurt it? No, it doesn't hurt it. I mean, don't like bend the filaments. Don't bash it. But look, you get it wet, it comes right back to its own shape, so it doesn't really matter. Huh. Well, 
warm water definitely gets it back there. I, it's one of my very favorite brushes. And I have it always in my, I have one of these in the travel it's a sets. mini one. If you've ever seen the travel That's sets, the they have a mini, mini one. There's two actually. Oh, I dropped a brush on the dog. There's a, there's a big mini and a mini, mini. Look at this one. There's a four and a six. Oh, is there a six? I don't know what uh -huh. six went. Uh, it's the most popular because it, lo it looks like this real, it's like a dwarven brush. It's like, yeah, it dun, really dun, is dun. gorgeous. So yeah. I really like them, but they do take a minute to get used to. Um, and don't, don't, never let a brush go, even if you're not getting along. <laughs> never let you, a brush you never go. know when you're going to reconcile and amazing brush strokes will happen. Um, I, I, I don't, I, I know it's a, a bit of a hoarding philosophy for me, but I do have a lot of brushes, so maybe it's not good advice, but I, I do tend to keep them because you just never know. Even ones that um, might appear broken, I tend to keep because you, they make cool marks and you just, you always need weird marks in your life. Mm. Right? They're just mark makers and they're your tools. They're your magic wands. And we got anything else before we but head out? This totally seems like a non sequitur to you, mm -hmm. but I want to play D&D &D too. <laughs> so now our next wednesday all the watercolor wednesdays are sort of scheduled out till middle of february mm -hmm. so you can see those we have uh, some gorgeous candy lollipops coming up that's going to teach some real technique on how to paint transparent things and shadows and shape and also be super great for valentine's if you want to make a valentine's card mm -hmm. then we have strawberry milk cow um which is kind of a tribute to my eldest child because my eldest child is obsessed with strawberry milk cows <laughs> and they're all over the room with that oh, i'll paint one maybe my oldest child will pay attention to me <laughs> so you've been kidnapped into that it is however very very cute then we have a really gorgeous girl from behind with hair and a bunch of heart balloons and then our pair. I may pop in um, other watercolors as I go. I'm going to be trying to give a lot more um, stuff together. It's just I've been having trouble getting my rhythm going this new year, 2022. Mm. You know, so I'll get back to it. You know me, I'm an art machine. So you'll probably be reined in on, on art lessons any second. You can share your watercolor in the Art Strip official group on Facebook. Tag me on Instagram. Show me on TikTok if you did it. Um, uh, definitely uh, show me on Twitter or Pinterest. I see everything on Twitter, though. If I need to see it, put it on Twitter. The eye of many Sherpa. Followers on Twitter. She Twitter. sees it all. Uh, well, on Twitter I do because I only have like 5,000 followers oh, over there. So it's a very really. intimate conversation. And also we have a, um, now what is the? Um, I don't know. Discord. Oh, yeah, we got Discord. You know what else we have? Hmm. Roku. And we have Roku. So we're trying to be everywhere, do everything, be all things to all things, I guess. High five, Kim, for sure. making Roku awesome. Thank you, Kim. Okay, guys, take a deep breath. <gasps> do this more than once. Don't get frustrated. It just takes practice, and it also takes you realizing that your wiggly little brushstroke is as valid as every other wiggly little brushstroke, and it's just about how they sing and dance together that makes your painting. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye.